Now we are starting our next chapter, that is a relational database design by ER to relational mapping. Last chapter or the sequence number four, we saw relational model. What is a relational model and how to make a relational model? That is basically relational database schema or relational model, same thing. Now you remember that we had our uh, three phases of database design. Can anybody repeat? Can anybody tell me what are the three phases of database design? Yes, our three phases of database design are number one, conceptual design, number two, logical design, number three, physical design. In conceptual design, we made our ER diagram, which was our conceptual design. In logical design, we are going to make the logical design today, inshallah. But our logical design is like the relational schema, relational database schema that we saw in our last chapter. We saw that there are tables and tables are linked together and we saw some constraints, primary key constraints, key constraints, domain constraints and referential integrity constraints. That, that is the logical design we want to have. Okay, now next question is how we will go from our step number one to step number two. In step number one, we had our ERD, Entity Relation uh, Diagram, ER Diagram. We will convert our ER Diagram to our logical design. We have, alhamdulillah, covered all the major concepts of our logical design or relational schema in last chapter. This chapter is about conversion of ERD to make our logical design. Okay, so this is this was our step number one that we covered in our chapter number three. And chapter number four, we had um, the concepts, major concepts of relational schema or logical design. In this chapter, we will convert our first step, which was our conceptual design or ERD, we will convert it into our logical design. Okay. How to convert it? The whole chapter will tell you. Before we, that's why the name of chapter is ER to relational mapping. Yani, we will convert our ER diagram or ER model to our relational model that we just finished. Or another name is ER to logical design mapping. Relational design or logical design, it's the same thing. So you call it relation or you call it logical. So this chapter is how to convert our ER diagram into logical design. Terminology that you should remember, we either we call it relational design or relational model or relational schema. You can call it logical design, logical model or logical schema. These are the same things, okay? Relational design or logical design, it's the same thing. So in this chapter, we are going to convert our conceptual model to our relational model or logical model. Yani convert, we represented our conceptual model in terms of ERD and we want to get our relational or logical model. So we will convert ERD to logical model. What are the steps? What are the things that we need to do in this conversion? These are the steps written here, seven steps. First step, we will map our entities, regular entities. Second step, we will map our weak entities. Third step, third to step number five, you see that these are relationships. If there are one-to-one -one relationship, we will map it, yani we will convert it. If this is one-to-n, how we will map it. If this is m-to-n, how we will map it. If there are multi-valued attributes, how we will map it. And if these are complex relationship, how do we do the mapping? The step number one, step number two, step number six are very, very easy. Very, very simple piece of cake, okay? And about step number three, four, five, you do, we need a little attention and then it will be easy, easy for you also. These three, four, five, and seven, these are the relationship. Conversion of the relationship, you need to learn two, three points, then these are also very easy. 
so we will convert we will see these two three points and we will see examples also this step number one two and six are very very easy inshallah so let's do that if you do these seven steps your ERD will be converted to your logical design okay this is the ER diagram of your conceptual schema that you did in your chapter number three. So this can be also a type of question in your exam that you are given a specification and you are asked to make an ER diagram. This is also a possible question. So do practice it well. This is what we had. This is employee uh, entity. These are the attributes of employee entity and attribute with underline, which is underline. This is called your primary key. Then these are the relationships. Okay, department is an entity. This is the relationship controls the project. Uh, employee works on a project. Then the relationships are mentioned here one to n. This is one to one relationship. Uh, this is the weak relationship and weak entity dependent because dependent it depends upon the employee So it is the weak entity and these are the attributes of weak entities These concepts we have covered in our chapter number three Okay, let's do step number one the step number one says all the normal or regular entities convert them to the tables for each entity you will make one table for each regular entity. This is a regular entity. Entity, you remember in our ER diagram, we, will represent, we were representing it with the help of a rectangle. This is a regular entity, this is a regular entity, this is a regular entity, and this is weak entity. For each regular entity, we will make one table or one relation. Another name of the table is relation, as you know. So how many regular entities are here? Employee, department, and project for each of them one table will be created inside the table what will be the attributes or what will be the columns these attributes will become the columns these attributes birth dates social security number name sex address salary these will become its columns this will become also a table and the columns of the tables will be name and number and together this will be a primary key similarly for the project this will also become a table what will be the columns or attributes of the table the attributes of entity will become attributes of the table or the columns of the table or the fields of the table okay that is our step number one so in step number one we identified that we have employee department and project these are three regular entities so we will make their three tables if you want to see it how does this look like it would look like this for employee there will be one table look here it is employee what will be the attributes or the columns in the table these attributes will be will become the columns of the table any birth date social security number first name middle initial last name address sex salary these are here first name middle initial last name social security birth date address sex salary and okay next second is our department and department we have these attributes and you know that in our attribute we already mentioned we made them underline those attributes for which we will be making them the primary key Similarly, we also make it make them underline so that these are the primary keys Here social security number is the primary key D number is the primary key and P number project number is the primary key So these are the first three tables that we got here That is our step number one In which we mapped our regular entities to the tables or the relations step number two mapping of the weak entities for weak entity we will also make a table but in addition to the table we will can we will add the primary key of the parent into the child look here this is the weak entity this will also be converted into a table what will be the attributes of the table 
name sex birth date relationship plus the primary key of the parent what is the parent of this weak entity the parent is employee what is the primary key of employee ssn so this will also become one attribute or one column of this table see here so dependent one uh, okay it's here another slide good slide we have so this was the employee this is dependent dependent is the weak entity we will make it a table plus we will add the primary key of the parent as one of the columns or one of the fields how would it look like it would look like this dependent table and you see here employee ssn which was social security number here this will be copied here the name this name essn or you can also keep it ssn it does not matter the name does not matter because we will link it we will link here this column it, it is coming from this column so we will here it's a primary key we will make its reference here as a foreign key so here it is a foreign key the title here does not matter okay it is a link here it's the parent this is the child name of the child does not matter because we are already making a reference to the parent so you call it here ssn or you call it essn dssn doesn't matter that was step number two now mapping the binary relationship does anybody remember what is the binary relationship we saw it in our chapter number three or four also i think what is the binary relationship students what do we mean by binary two relationship means if two entities they are connected together they have some association that is called binary relationship like you see here in the picture here this entity it has its relationship with dependents employee has its relationship with the project so a relationship that involves two entities is called binary relationship next we are going to see how do we map binary relationship this slide is the key for many next slides very very important very important very easy okay whenever there is a binary relationship yani there are two entities which have have relationship we will identify one of the entity as a parent and we will identify the second entity as a child so this is the first thing we have to identify who is the parent and who is the child second we will always as a general rule we will copy primary key of the parent into the child when the primary key is copied into an any other table we make it a foreign key as a general rule whenever there is a parent and there is a child we will copy primary key of the parent and paste it as a foreign key into the child this is the general uh, rule relationship between parent and child we are going to implement it inshallah in our next slides we are going to see it okay next is how to how to map the derived attributes as i told you before that the derived attributes we do not store it into our database so simple it it goes nowhere we do not make any column for the derived attributes for example your gpa because the derived attributes it is changing always most of the time so we do not store it rather we calculate it when we display it for example your gpa whenever you see your gpa in the system it is not stored into the database rather it is calculated from your exist all the grades in your courses like your gpa in semester 1 is different than your semester 2 gpa than semester 3 gpa 
So it means every time you see your GPA, it is not coming from the database. It is calculated at runtime and it is shown to you. So all the derived attributes, we do not store it into our database. Okay, coming next is our mapping of binary relationship, which are one to one, which are one to one. Okay, in one to one relationship, it means one from the left side and one from the right side. Essentially, it can be, there are three basic types of one to one. In first type, both of the sides, left side and right side, both are mandatory. Second, one of them is mandatory, maybe left or right. One is mandatory and one is optional. I will show you example in next slides. Just try to uh, listen here and then you will see the examples. Mandatory means both sides are essential. We cannot skip any of them. Both are necessary. And one mandatory means one of them we must have, it is compulsory. And second one is optional. It may be there and it may not be there. Third one, it is optional on both sides, both sides of one to one. So one is mandatory, uh, both mandatory, one optional, one mandatory, and both optional. So to understand this, these three, mandatory and optional, there is a key that when you are considering one-to-one -one relationship, you remember that we had our multiplicity. In multiplicity, we had our maximum values and minimum values. Let me correct it a little bit. Minimum, comma, control, v. yes, this is good now. Okay, this is fine now. We had our two values. One was the minimum value, which we call participation. Maximum value, we call it cardinality. In one-to-one -one relationship, you should consider the green one, which is the minimum value. You should not consider the maximum value because it will not help us. In one-to-one -one relationship, we should consider the minimum values, which is, the, which is called participation. We should not consider the maximum because this will not help us. Let's see it now with the help of examples. Okay, see these two entities. This is staff, this is car. Staff uses a car. Yani, this staff has a relationship with the car. The relationship name is uses. And you see the multiplicity here, one to one and one to one, yani minimum one, maximum one, similarly minimum one here and maximum one here. Okay, out of these, the first value is the minimum. Next value is maximum. Here also minimum and the maximum. We will consider the minimum values only. We will not consider the maximum values. Okay, you see here minimum value here is one and here is also one. If both are one, one, it means both are mandatory. If one of them is zero, you see here it is one, it is zero. It means it is mandatory here and optional here. Zero represents optional because it can be zero, it can be one also. Okay, so it's optional. Maybe staff has a car. Staff has zero car because not everybody has a car. So staff may have zero cards or staff may have one car. So any staff member who is coming to the office, he can come in one car. So either he comes in zero cars, maybe he's coming in taxi or so, or if he comes in car, he will have only one car. So it means optional, maybe zero, maybe one. One side is mandatory. This is one, one side is optional. In another example, see, zero to one, zero to one. Okay, so it means it is optional on the left side, it is also optional on the right side. I'm just explaining the terminology, mandatory and optional. Mandatory is represented by one and optional is represented by zero. Going back in step one, if both sides are mandatory, 
one one we have two entities and we have their both sides mandatory relationship what we will do we will join them together into one table how many tables we will make when there is one to one relationship and both sides are mandatory we will make one table okay let's see how we will make one table in next slide these are two entities this is one to one mandatory relationship in staff what were the attributes the attributes were staff number name position salary branch number supervisor number in car what were the attributes vehicle license number make and model we will join both of these attributes into one table and you name the table anything for ease you can join the together staff car this is the name of the table or you can set the name abc xyz anything you like but what we want to learn from here is that how many tables we will make here we will make one table which will have attributes of both of these entities <laughs> this is the important point second 3b b means second part in second part one of the sides is mandatory and other one is optional mandatory can be left or right optional can be left or right but we have one mandatory and we have one optional we are looking at only minimum value in one to one relationship we are looking at minimum values not the maximum values so you see here here the minimum value is one mandatory minimum value is zero any yani optional if one side is mandatory and one is optional how many tables we are going to make two first table with the name staff second table with the name car so let's see it we had two entities staff the same it is the same picture staff in the car we will make two tables the first table is here staff oh, give me a second please um here just for your ease i want to color them so that you understand clearly this is just for your ease no other purpose yeah okay so two tables one for the staff one for the car so and then of course we have to link them together because they have an association so we will link them together how do we link them from the staff and the car guys which can be the parent and which can be the child just use your common sense can car be a parent of staff or staff can be the parent of car who can be the parent of course staff owns the car car cannot own the staff <laughs> staff owns the car so staff can be the parent and car cannot own the staff car can be the child okay so this is one thing this is one thing easy you can uh, figure it out so then we know this is the parent and this is the child whenever there is a parent child relationship we always copy the the id uh, the primary key of the parent into the child like here in our society every child gets its name of father isn't it every child also gets the name of the father so this is the father this is parent this is the child so the child must get the id yani the primary key of the parent this is the same like we do it in our normal uh, society 
what is the primary key of the staff staff number we will copy it into the um, second table which is card staff number it is copied here so then we have to reference it back it's a primary key here in the staff table in car table it will become a foreign key this is the link we are referencing okay that was b b any one side optional and one side mandatory next c so c means both sides are optional look zero optional zero optional so it means both sides are optional question how many table we will make here once again we will make here two tables we will make here two table so you see here two tables one table here is staff and one table here is car again the thing is the same that you will identify the parent and the child then you will copy the primary key of the parent into the child and it in the parent it is the primary key in child it becomes the foreign key so once again i am repeating it for you when you have both sides optional you will make two tables and whenever you will make two tables you will identify one of them as primary uh, as parent and second as child whenever you find parent and child you always copy the primary key of the parent into child so the summary is in one to one relationship there are three possibilities the first possibility both sides mandatory if there are both sides mandatory how many tables you will make one okay so you make here one table i'm using the color just to make you understand that this is one table if one side is mandatory and another the second side is optional either left or right doesn't matter one side is mandatory one is optional how many tables you are make you will make two tables when you are making two tables you should identify one of them as parent and second one as child once you identify as parent identify them as parent and child add the parent's primary key into child and make it foreign key into child in parent it is primary key in child it is foreign key we must reference it if both sides are optional then how many tables we will make two and if whenever we make two tables we identify them parent and child and we always copy the primary key of the parent into the child okay so our